right, so hey, welcome to uh, Site Strategic in Interviews. Uh, we were proud to be able to host uh, a great uh, panel uh, discussion here over at Site Strategics, talking about agile marketing uh, and the agile marketing indie uh, group here. And uh, we're proud to be able to have uh, the, the the individuals that uh, we were able to interview uh, here in the studio. We want to do a quick live cast on Site Strategics. So I want to introduce to you to some to great assets of of Indianapolis. Santiago uh, Jaramillo, Jaramillo, I keep on tripping over that, I'm sorry, but but I got it, right? You got it. All right, CEO and co-founder of Amplify, and Andy Medley, CEO and co-founder of Perk. Gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time after our, our uh, engagement today. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, it feels so cool every time I'm in here, I got to be honest, this oh, place is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I kind of stepped up our game here after that. Yeah. This thing, this is legit. <laughs> it's legit. Well, uh, I wanted to introduce um, uh, our listeners and our audience to, uh, to 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 these two gentlemen. And if you don't know them by now, I mean, you certainly should. I mean, Santiago he uh, he is he's been named uh, recently Indianapolis Business Journal's Forty Over Forty in 2015 as one of the youngest honorees in the program's history, and received the award uh, of the Indiana Latino Business Man of the Year in 2016, and a national recognized expert and keynote speaker on employee engagement. And uh, he's also the co-author of Agile Engagement, which is a fantastic book. You didn't mention that book whenever we were talking about <laughs> it uh, in, in, the, in the panel. Uh, and he's also the, the, the CEO and founder of uh, Amplify, the industry leader in, in data-driven employee analytics and actioning action-enabling insights for business leaders. It actually helps uh, executives leverage employee insights to be able to make their workforce more successful. So Amplify itself is, is a fantastic company and in, in, re, in receiving in so many awards regularly. Uh, thank you, Santiago, for joining me today. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. Why don't you go with me first? <laughs> Cause you got to follow up. I, got, I, mean. <laughs> I, I probably should have turned that around, right? But but you've been on mountaintops, Andy. Hey, this, yeah, this, this, this is close. Very tall, mountain very top. close. So I want to also introduce Andy Medley. Uh, he's a he's the Perk CEO and co-founder. He spent his past decade growing businesses and developing B two B technology that leverages consumer behavior uh, and their more importantly their data to personalize and assist consumers their their shopping experience online. So Andy's focus is actually solving common uh, consumer engagement problems has actually led to a runaway success of Perk's online guided shopping solution, which actually increases time on site, higher quality leads, and, and higher revenue for clients. Perk also won an, an American Business Award for new lead generation product uh, t for 2017. That's actually really sexy, man. I appreciate it. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it sounds good. I didn't write a book, though, but I'm, I, maybe I'm working on that. <laughs> And he's also passionate about uh, the outdoors, but he doesn't go camping. I don't know what that's all about. Because there's beds and under roofs. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to go. You had to go camping when you climb these it's big mountain tops. It's an evil necessity. Okay. Okay. See. So yeah. Yes. So you've yeah. been on mountain tops. What, what two mountains have you been on? Uh, Shasta and Rainier. And which? And Rainier's higher, is it not? Yes. Yeah, they're both in the Cascades. Oh, yeah. Yep. And and the type of crew that you went up there with, I mean, this is oh, this one is was my serious. wife, and I just tried to follow her all the way up. <laughs> oh, no, so, wait, really? Oh yeah, she's uh, oh my god, she's as tough as nails. Oh, that's incredible. Yep. Well, I mean, you certainly have a lot of personal accolades, and being named one of the Indianapolis Business Journal's 40 Under 40 and a finalist for the Ernst and Young and Entrepreneur of the Year Award. So can, uh, you've got some good accolades. Come yeah, on, but I'm old now, and you know, he's still wise. <sighs> Wise. Don't don't talk to me that old. <laughs> I mean, come on. So uh, tell me tell me about Amplify and then tell me about Perk real quick. Sure. So we have we help leaders um, have more successful workforces by helping them understand the best, most valuable actions that they can take today uh, to improve, to create a more engaging environment for their team. Uh, more engagement equals less turnover, more productivity, and a whole host of other uh, business benefits. Not to speak of h how it improves uh, people's lives by by experiencing more engagement at work. And so that's what we do. We do it all from a data driven perspective. So we measure engagement here confidentially from from employees and then help leaders make decisions about how to have a, a better and improved employee engagement strategy. We'll unpack that a little bit more, but uh, but but that's a fantastic uh, utilization of data because we, we, we have to understand the, the employee satisfaction and how, how to actually increase uh, um, um, 
uh, what do you want to say, uh, advocacy inside the organization as well. Um, Andy, tell us about PERC. Uh, highest level, the problem we solve is that um, high considered purchases services, expensive stuff that consumers are buying. Right. Um, they don't want to shop for it in stores anymore. Uh, and yet they want to continue to do as much education and research as they can online and accept that process for consumers is awful. And it's typically a byproduct that the, that the businesses just don't have the tools available to them, to them today that are on the same level of the expectation the consumer has from shopping for things that are $2 instead of thousands of dollars like, right. like Tide right, on right. Amazon. And so our online guided shopping solution allows for those types of businesses, high consider purchases businesses like apartments, mm-hmm. like home furnishings, like automotive, um, to put them in an experience or put them in a, a situation where um, the consumers that are visiting their websites can engage in a meaningful way regardless of where they're at in the funnel and drive them down through the funnel through utilization of real-time data, aka the fancy word machine learning, um, of in, that's, that are powering our interactive experiences that answer consumer questions and help narrow that universe of infinite amount of choices mm-hmm. down to this specific apartment or or this specific chair or this specific automobile. And so really at the at the highest level we turn your website into your best salesperson. There it is. Um, so the, the 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 unifying factor here uh, is is literally data and and what we've uh, just had a conversation about is the agile methodology as it applies to marketing as well as um, operational management, right? And for those of you that don't know, uh, the the Agile process is an iterative process, um, which Cytrotis also uh, employs with, uh, with 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 hopefully good prudence. Um, but it, it, it's a space in which you are you're 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 actually you know what I'm going to ask you both to describe Agile in in your best uh, uh, perspective. Me or you? Go. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> it's really a, a philosophy and a set of principles that can guide uh, how you create process right. uh, with the outcomes of those principles being a faster adaptability to change um, and, and faster output and, and faster results. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that all necessitates really frequent communication and collaboration. So it allows uh, a team to have the focus to go heads down for a period, a sprint, whether it's a week or two, um, know that that scope of work isn't going to be messed with so that they can really focus and, and get the work done. Yet, Everyone on the team lifts up their heads from the work at an ongoing basis, whether it's a week or or two, to say, are we still pursuing the most important priorities for our team and for the business? And it allows for uh, the adaptability as you learn Mm -hmm. uh, how your solutions are working in the marketplace or with the various stakeholders you're delivering. You can iterate a lot more quickly and ultimately achieve more value as a team with the same amount of resources. All right, uh, Andy, your interpretation of Agile marketing. Um, Allowing you to uh, break very complex projects down into very iterative states. So you have a common goal, a big goal. Mm -hmm. I want to accomplish launch project A. In marketing's instance, we are launching a new product um, into a new market. Um, That is broken down into a million different pieces of steps. When you have that idea, you have limited feedback. Um, consumers uh, or customers in this instance typically are the ones that you really are trying to um, advocate to. And uh, when you start, um, you have limited information as you go down. That information starts to pour in. So for me, I look at Agile as a way to to create bite-sized chunks that allow you to change your mind. Um, The customers are Mm -hmm. different based on where the Agile is, right? So in engineering, the customers are sales or the customers are um, the product managers. Um, in marketing, right. the customers can be the salespeople. It can be me. It can be literally literally the customers. Um, and so it allows you to break it down and actually get that feedback and adjust uh, your tactics um, to whatever your, your big overall strategy is. So uh, this is, uh, Agile itself is, is a derivative of project build type of, of execution and and where you have slivers and slices of deliverables as opposed to long burns of a project where all of a sudden you're you're far off the target that you were really intending and 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 per our conversation it, it, I mean we we realize where project management has been before uh, it, it could be Two years before before change can actually happen because it was so connected to the waterfall execution and and collecting all of the the uh, respective uh, uh, necessary requirements and going through that process that was very myopic and blinders on. 
mm-hmm. as as different project managers or different um, uh, produ- producers were developing their their product. So now everything's pulled back, and this new concept is really is blinders open, and on top of it, there's a, a op- openness for candor and communication back up the funnel as opposed to just being uh, a producer, you have the ability to also challenge what's happening during a, a particular sprint or during a particular execution, correct? Yeah, hundred percent. So, I mean, you can think about the idea that also kind of on top of that is that you can stop right. um, and, and allow feedback to take place and that capacity can be replaced with something else. Right. And then you start again. Right. And, and, and that, what you start again with is solving the next problem framed up into some form of bite-sized chunks that an individual or individuals inside of a sprint are going to be working on. And if you're not ready to move on, um, typically back in the day, you just keep going absent of that feedback as opposed to saying, you know what, we're going to take this next sprint off. I'm going to release this and get some feedback from whoever my customer is in this instance. And then I'm going to see what they like. And then I'm going to figure out what I want to do next. Right. Cause I know where I kind of want to go, but I'm not exactly sure I want to get there. So your customer can absolutely be internal as well as external, right? But with with uh, dialing it in to such a small period of feedback, right? You also have to have the maturity within an organization of how to deliver a particular message, right? Because where where maybe old conventions were, well, grinding your teeth and I'll just get this done, and then maybe a QA will be at the end of a particular deployment. We're actually in a space where now. It's the responsibility of every practitioner inside of Agile, whether whether it's operations manager all the way down to each individual that's actually executing. They have a responsibility to give feedback much more earlier, and they also have to have another uh, another discipline of paying attention to what's going on. So they can't keep their heads down. They got a meerkat up and 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 know what in the world's going on with that particular deployment, right? Very much so. I like the meerkat up. That's right. <laughs> but I mean, that's a challenge is because on top of everything, this is great from an iterative change course quickly methodology, mm-hmm. right? But you also have the internal employment employee engagement that is also a cultural change that is brand new inside of, inside of corporate organizations worldwide. Sure. So interestingly enough, um, we work with um, industrial organizational psychologists and and statisticians to understand what are the drivers of engagement, right? This sort of idea of engagement being uh, an individual's emotional and intellectual connection to their work and their employer, that this how much they care, how much they're energized and they, they come with their best self to work and give their best every day. It's a sort of lean in posture. It's it's the holy grail of leadership is to be able to create such an environment that it inspires a person's full engagement to come to work on a daily basis. That That's really what leadership is about. Amen. And, and so we wanted to break that down and say, what is it? What are the drivers of engagement? How do you create an engaging environment? And one of those is, in fact, autonomy, is an individual's ability to make meaningful decisions about their role. And so for us, it was interesting to watch. Mm. Um, uh, our autonomy driver increase inside of our marketing team is that we deployed an agile engagement methodology to how we operated as a marketing team. I'll explain. Before, uh, a sales rep would maybe come up to the marketing team and say, hey, uh, can you guys get me a, mar- uh, a marketing one-sheeter so that I can send uh, to, to, to a prospect in my pipeline so I can close the deal, and here's what it needs to say. Mm-hmm. Um at that point, um, marketing didn't have the ability to bring their best set of creative gifts and talents to the table and come up with something truly creative. They were just really an order taker executing on an order from a, a different department. Uh, what we were able to do once we really deployed Agile was that uh, marketing would ask that sales team member, what problem are you trying to solve for whom and to what outcome? Um, and, and so there was rigor Put on well as a salesperson. I, this is kind of a user story format. Um, as a salesperson, I want to be able to effectively answer uh, this type of prospect's objection so that I can move them forward in the funnel and eventually close them faster uh, and not lose to a competitor and, and and get them as a customer. And, and all of a sudden, handing that challenge to the marketing team, right. it wasn't a, an order. It was simply a challenge of an open-ended problem that they could they can apply their full 
creative faculties to solve. And what we saw was that marketing did way better work. They came up with solutions that the salesperson ha- hadn't thought about. Right. Um, and they were so much more engaged because they could bring their full gifts and talents to the table uh, and really feel a sense of autonomy in doing their work. So and all so of a sudden you have a team working on a problem mm-hmm. as opposed to sales asking, e- even politely, but mm-hmm. asking of just a deliverable without engaging the sale, the, the marketing, the marketing team with their contribution into it. So all of a sudden you've just bro- broken threshold, broken walls down, right? Yeah. And the sales folks loved it because they would get handed a solution that absolutely nailed the problem they were trying to solve way better than they had even imagined. Uh, and we actually got it right the very first time mm-hmm. uh, instead of making assumptions that, oh, this is a solution that they wanted. And, uh, and that wasn't, wasn't ever the case. So, so the, the, uh, the, 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 the architecture of an agile environment is, is uh, sprint work of, of enclosed period of time in which you, you collect all the needs from all different departments or any executions that you're going to do, close the doors, and then you burn down that particular set of requirements and also give feedback after the event. All right, so, so you can actually all have a good level of communication and candor about what happened, what didn't get delivered, and what what did get delivered, and what was the what was the uh, perspectives of everybody, right? Yeah, retrospectives are really kind of incredibly important, and and, and beyond it, it's it's like a built in um, it's a it's a way to it's a built in ability to look back in a bite sized chunk and go, wow, look what we accomplished, right? Right, and so for most of us, um, you're just you know, looking forward and right. you never look back. And what's nice about agile is that you have to, whether it's good or whether it's bad. It's, it's a discipline like, that you have yeah, to, you have, you have to, you got to sit down, you got to talk about it. So when it's good, um, Hey everybody. Yeah. We're celebrating as a team. Look at all this stuff we just got done when it's right. bad. What got better? What am I not going to do again? Um, why did we not, how did, where did we mess up? How did I not communicate well with you? Right. It forces some issues on the table that wouldn't have been done otherwise. And I think one thing to think about, too, is the fact that we talk about it being able to change. And in my opinion is that the reality is, is that it's not, it's not change that saves you, saves you so much wasted capacity. Because the change isn't that you're changing your mind and you're redoing work. Mm. The change is that you had an opinion about what you were going to do next, and that changed. So you never put capacity towards that future Early, earlier course way, adjustments. Way earlier course adjustments, right? So you think about it as like, you don't know where you're going. It's like, I know where I'm going to there. And then after that, it gets super blurry. <laughs> and people are either okay with that or right. they're not okay with that. And what Agile does is put a discipline around it. What I love about retrospectives is an opportunity to step outside of the work that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Andy actually said this uh, earlier, but... Um, Naming the process and articulating it, whether it's perfect or or very imperfect, is incredibly valuable because it gives you something to iterate from. And so you also want to iterate the agile engagement process. And that retrospective gives you a a minute to say what's working about the way that we're doing work. Um, And and that can be an incredibly empowering time for individuals to say, hey, this isn't working. This isn't working. This was really great. Um, and, And that level of... Of, of candor and feedback to each other um, really makes for, for healthier and stronger teams. And, and, and to kind of summarize, because there's so much inside of Agile that d- deserves much more uh, uh, introspection, but it does help in employee engagement beyond measure from conventional operational and conventional project management. Tell me both about your employee engagements um, and how your teams, respectively, have embraced and also um, learned from the deployment of Agile? Um, I think that the, it's a process that kind of fits who we are. So when, when we think about leadership at PERC, um, leadership's responsibilities at PERC, it really comes down to three things. The first is a compelling mission, right, which is a novel idea, but it's, you're solving a big problem. You know, your, your, your business has a, a, a core focus, right, a long-term um, goal of what they're trying to accomplish. And, and second for us is, is really the idea that we connect every individual in the organization to that mission so that they understand every single day um, why what they do matters, right? right. And, and we have metrics and a process around how that gets done. It's not as easy as, um, as it sounds. We worked really hard to get to that point. But again, I mean, these are people that are dedicating their lives um, to there this mission, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And then the third thing is that we are um, 
promise to recruit talented and, and like-minded individuals to join that team. That's leadership's responsibility. Right. So pieces underneath that are things like Ag- like Agile that allow those talented and like-minded individuals to jump into what is a culture that hopefully they already fit into hmm. to, to really accomplish the second piece, which is what I do on a daily di- daily um every day matters and how it actually accomplishes that overall mission. So that's kind of the core tenet. It's like a, it's hand in glove for us. Excellent. Uh, Santiago. So uh, at Amplify, we're on a mission to improve the lives of 1 million people through more engaging work. And so for us to actually improve the lives of 1 million people through more engaging work, uh, we're three or 4% uh, there to that goal. And, and uh, we're, we're well, I mean, you, you've that. specified that number yep. right there. That's fantastic. It is. Yep. So that's the mountain that we're trying to climb, right? And so in the pursuit of, of climbing that mountain, uh, the only way that we get there is if we solve really important problems for our customers, our buyers, which are really leaders inside of organizations, who are the ones that typically have the influence to change work environments. Right. And if you change a working environment, which is where an individual spends half of their waking life, uh, that's how you improve somebody's life, right? So so what we need to do is solve really important problems for leaders. Uh, and what I love about Agile is that it puts the, the the customer, the user, in the center. With a user story, you have to say, as a you know X user, this is what I want to do, and this is the outcome that I want to get. And so you, you have to focus on what problem am I trying to solve mm-hmm. uh, for my buyer, and how do we communicate that uh, to them? And so Agile is a way of really bringing that back together by putting the customer right in the very center. Center. And one of the things that we like to talk about is how we're customer obsessed hmm. uh, at Amplify, right? We, we, we pretend that at every single meeting, you know, the customer is, is sitting in, in, in this, you know, uh, That's chair a great here visualization. Um, yeah. to make sure that we're bringing them in the conversation. They're not present in our decision um, making, you know, physically, but but can we understand them deeply, embody right. them and bring in their perspective to how and and there's something really fundamentally aligned in, in how Agile does user stories that to forces you to think about uh, the end user uh, when you're prioritizing anything. So it's focus. It's it's um, retrospectives. It's a, a limited tasks so you know exactly what you are going to be doing it's also retrospective so you are you're executing either marketing or product um, deployment in a in a much more narrow space so you know what the heck you're doing right and you don't have long burns where where steerage isn't even a consideration and on top of that you also have candor and candor is incredibly important whenever it gets down to employee engagement and the culture benefits so much more as as you're in that space and as you're listening to your employees and you give them power to be able to control the destiny of the organization. You listened, Darren. I did. <laughs> that was a good synopsis. Yeah, well said. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your time. I truly do. And we certainly appreciate both uh, organizations. You are lights inside of Indianapolis, and it's an honor always to be able to speak to you guys. So... Thanks Thank so much. much. You're Thank more than you. welcome. And uh, we're going to always champion you guys as you give give back to Indy. Thank you very much for what you do as well. You're more than welcome. Here. Absolutely. All right. That's it. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll be uh, continuing our conversations with CEOs and uh, organizations that are really just defining what it means to be a, a new millennium, new media uh, 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 business and uh, light for Indianapolis. So thanks so much. And we'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>